good morning everyone so we are starting today right dot at 9:30 and what a wonderful day again to start with all the maritime training institutes principals marine faculties i thank you from bottom of my heart for the overwhelming response to this program yesterday i almost took around 1 hour to reply to each and every message of appreciation yesterday there were so many messages appreciating this program and i once again thank you for that as you know when we are appreciated it propels us to do more good work and believe me it has propelled us to do more and more someone wrote on whatsapp message yesterday saying that captain apankar ye dil mange more and to quench your thirst we are promising you to come up with another wonderful program very short we will be trying to bridge the gap between the trainer and the trainee from a very very different perspective a totally new concept i also thank ddg training shri ashish vankade for joining the program again and will you believe sir was here at 8:45 he had joined the course at 8:45 thank you very much sir for joining hitesh i also want to tell you that the marine industry is your fan now so faculties please give a big round of applause for mr hitesh also on this note let's start today's session which is going to be more fun more knowledge over to you hitesh sure the so first of all thank you so much and i hope that you had a lot of fun yesterday so today i'm going to start off with telling you something which is very going to be very very interesting for all of you and which is going to help you to understand that how do we engage participants now engagement is a very critical aspect like you know i got a lot of mails yesterday uh, that asking me that you know what is the ideal number of classroom what is the ideal number of students how much students can i handle can i really see all students or not and there are a lot of lot of such questions which are which were there yesterday but let me tell you it is not about the number of students you handle it is about the way you handle the students on the online class but yes there are some guidelines which has to be followed uh, you know which which is why i would recommend that all of you should not be having more than uh, you know 30 to 40 students in one batch that will become easier for you at least when you are starting off when you become a bit more experienced faculty after a lot of practicing 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 i would recommend that uh, what you can simply do is the like way i do you know you take all the questions just towards the end and you start talking to people and you ask them a lot of close ended questions you can say them you know say yes say why say say hi all that stuff so i'm going to show you you know what is the tips and techniques which i use to manage huge crowds right so in the past by the way um, i don't know how many you know so not we have managed a crowd of almost 35000 people live so so yeah so we have really managed a lot of large numbers and you know before this the version 1 of the mdp which was there you know we managed 11000 teachers attending it live on our channel right so it's not that difficult with some practice you will be able to also manage such large numbers it is basically almost you know it's about it's about you being confident enough that you can do it with the first battle is not about the people the first battle is about your brain i still remember that day you know uh, when if you really ask me we are not doing something very extraordinary in life in the sense that uh, when first time when we did the national level fdp program you know we got a call from a teacher saying that uh, should we close the registrations we got 1000 registrations and i'm not sure if zoom can handle so much do you think we'll be able to have managed large numbers do you think are you confident enough to uh, teach so many people i said uh, let's go ahead with it even i do not know but but let's just go ahead with it you know so there comes a time in your life when you have to decide whether you going to do the same thing the way you're doing it for many many years or you going to go beyond your normal and you going to do something and i am glad that we took that decision and we went ahead and who knew that we going to empower 11000 plus teachers and then who knew as a version 2 we going to empower 1500 maritime faculties from across india right so see your support that is helping us manage and break records every single time i don't think in the online fraternity there'll be such a big large fraternity of maritime faculties assembling at one webinar like this so first of all for this success i would like to congratulate all of you guys you logging in from different parts of countries different parts of wherever you are maybe some of you are on ships some of you are basically are traveling somewhere some of you are operating from your phone some of you have just you know uh, not even had your breakfast and came over here so first of all 
thank you so much for joining in. And I would also like to thank, you know, Dr. Ashutosh Apandekar for this entire initiative of being such a sport and managing the event at such a short notice, you know, where it was actually very difficult to pull off such an event, but it's all because of you that this is all happening. So I'd like to congratulate the entire team of T.S. Rehman, DDG Shipping, Maham Mani Association for making this event a good success. Now, let's begin and let's basically start on, you know, how can we start engaging our students and what do we do about it? So today's training list is going to be approximately in two parts. All right. The first part, okay, of this training is going to be about how do you use a software like Zoom? But I understand some of you might be apprehensive because of Zoom, because of which, you know, what we can simply do is I, I'm also going to show you other alternatives available apart from Zoom. So I won't be able to train you on that because paucity of time. But I will compare all of them and I'll tell you which one is the best for you to use. I still prefer Zoom because of the seamlessness of this platform unless and until the government brings another platform. So just to give you an information, yesterday, Prime Minister Modi and the government of India announced a competition where they have told the shortest 10 IT companies, companies like Zoho, HCL and other big brands and we have told them and they've given a project to them to start working on a video conferencing software as good as Zoom. And the company who is able to make the software first, they're going to award them 20 lakh rupees who have completed the software. So this is a competition by the government to get India's own application for video conferencing. Having said that, you know, uh, the day is not far that we might be having an Indian company, but by then we have to rely on whatever options we have available in the market right now. All right. So the, the, today's first section will be about training you on platforms like Zoom. The second section that we're going to do is we're going to train you on platforms such as uh, Kahoot, Socrative, where we're going to show you how do we engage participants. Because also see, you have to make the learning fun. Because the learning is very boring. Students might just on their phones and they might just go on clumber. And let's, let's understand today that the students of today are more smarter okay, than uh, anybody else. Because they are more aware of digital technologies. They normally use digital technologies. And they also are aware of all the loopholes in this technology as well. Right. So I'm going to cover all of those points for you today. But I'm going to show you step by step by step by step. How can you become more smarter with the current generation? All right. Let's begin. So first of all, okay, let's do a quick recap of yesterday's session. So what we did yesterday. Yesterday we saw how to set up an online college. We also saw how to use talent LMS. And we also basically saw how can you become a digital lead in your college, okay, where you can start giving initiatives to people. Right. Now, if you see today, the online education has evolved over a period of time. For example, earlier, you should do, change, you should do things in chalk and board. Then came the era of projectors, where you start projecting things over there. And today is a laptop, which is a screen, which has become a training platform. So it's very, very imperative for us that we start using this, you know, uh, cohesively. Also, we're going to see today, how do we conduct live sessions? How many of you guys over here today face struggle? in conducting live sessions for yourself at this point in time. And you think that offline was much, much, much better, but online session is something which is which I have to still get comfortable on. Give me a quick eye on the chat box and give you think that, you know, you're going to be struggling with these, with these live sessions right now. And today I'm going to try to make all your struggles come to an end. All right. And I'm going to show you exactly that. How can you essentially use this in a much, much better way? The first, let's understand that what are the biggest challenges for us at this point in time? So some of the biggest challenges for us right now is how to make, first of all, the sessions interactive. Because sessions, if they're not interactive, your students won't get bored. Correct? Number two is how do I monitor attention of students? How do I know whether they're really attentive or not? What are they doing? What are they not doing? Etc. Etc. Correct? Number three is how do I keep a track of who attended my program? Who is the person who has come? Who is the person who has not come into my program? And number four, how do we do, how do we teach some practical subjects like mathematics or engineering on your, you know, on your Zoom platforms, right? Now, this is the challenges of teachers. Do you agree that this is the main top challenges right now? Type the word agree on the chat box. And you agree that this is the main challenge of any teacher today to understand all these aspects, correct? But now let's understand what do students want? The students today, they should be able to ask queries. See, the way you are facing challenges, even students are facing challenges. 
right number 2 they want to ensure that teacher is interesting they don't want any we didn't want any boring subjects right they don't want teacher to be very boring because see offline and online is a huge difference in both of them number 3 you know how do we basically get grades for assignments right and number 4 is how do we give a same experience in the offline experience as much as we can in the online world i'm not saying we can replicate the offline experience but we actually give a same experience to people in the online world All right now let's first of all before i tell you about how do we go about doing live training let's understand what are different modes of training available for us the first one is called live session so what i am doing right now i'm doing a live session with you when i'm talking to you you're talking to me we both are talking to each other right now right i always prefer live sessions are the best because they really bring the human element in you people can interact with you you can interact with people so it works seamlessly for everybody number 2 is recorded session so let's take some of you are more comfortable in live sessions you can actually go for recorded sessions as well we can actually start recording your videos in advance then share the video with people so that they can start doing things as well number 3 a presentation based for example i can just switch off my video right now and i can just keep on speaking okay about my uh, presentation right now so suppose you are very conscious about your looks some people are right if you are very conscious about your appearance you can actually go for presentation based training as well right so that that can also work for you uh, effectively all right then next is what we call is interactive training so i'm going to show you some examples of interactive training okay where we're going to show you some voting platforms and how do we make it interactive okay let's do it right now only do you want to see how can we conduct live votes while in session yep so i'm going to show you a quick tool on this one this tool is called voxvote.com so first of all we actually go over here let me just go back over here let me just take my screen it's called voxvote.com So if you go to the website called voxvote.com and you can actually have online voting platforms out here. So what you simply do is you go to voxvote and you need to make a login ID and password. The way you normally do every single time. So I'm just going to log into my existing account right now. Give me a moment. Okay, so now Voxvote is nothing but a live voting platform. It's a good way to engage students. All right, and let me show you how does it really work. So now we come over here. We can create new event. Uh, so I don't have a new event right now. I'm referring to existing event because in the free version, the best part is this tool is absolutely free. This is a live voting tool which you can actually use. All right, I'm going to just modify one of my existing questions only. So first things first, if we give a topic name, so just say I'm testing as a FDP for TS Rehman, right? And we basically we just uh, if we just put we should just put two questions out here. Now how do you put questions out here? It's pretty simple. You can just click on this button called Create a Question, Add a New Question, and you can add questions out here. Let's take it. Just add a question. Let's take for example. I'll put a simple question like, you know, which is the first step in online college school management, right? And I give my answers. So let's take. I do. So let's take. I make making students comfortable. I can just put my second answer. I let me zoom in the screen for you so you can see it pretty well. So you can see I put a question and I put an answer. Then I can just say teacher training, right? And then if I want, I can just choose. I just put just put one more thing over here, and let me just put something called as student onboarding. Okay, very quickly. Can somebody tell me what is the right answer over here? It's the first one, correct, right? Make students comfortable. And update this question. So first things first, I update the question. All right, and this is what we call as a question which is close-ended. Where simply what I'm doing is I'm simply putting a question in place which is close-ended in nature. And now, okay, let me just delete this. Let me just delete this question. I delete this first question of mine. 
Okay, okay. Can you tell me? Can you tell me what about Vijay? Okay, let's put this question right now because so you can also put an open-ended question. When you put an open-ended question, what typically happens is the, you know people can start answering uh, the questions like it means it's it's going to be because it's going to become a word cloud. And I'm, again, I'm going to show you a demo of this. Okay, you're going to see practically how does it really work. So don't worry about it. So we can also have an open-ended question. But for this one, for this type of a question, you can choose word cloud. All right, and uh, then I can also basically put. What is the best software for screen recording? Uh, let me just uh, put this. Which is the best tool for live sessions? So if you see, I put, I put three questions now. Let me just put the right answer as Zoom. Correct. Then keep on updating. So you can basically just see, I got four questions out here. What, can you tell me about one word about FDP? What is the best tool for live sessions? What is the best? What is the first step in online school management? Let's put this question as first. Then this question will be second. This question will be third. So we put three questions right now. So if you just new question answers out here, are we clear about this so far? How to make question answers on Voxboard? Give me a quick yes on chat box. Okay, fantastic. Now let's take. I want to play this quiz with you. How do we play this quiz? So I can just click on live over here, and now I want all of you guys to currently go to, okay. This thing called as live dot voxboard dot com. Okay, let me just put this in the screen for all of you. So first step is you have to log in. Okay, how do you log in? Let me just show that to you. So everybody, you just need to go to live dot voxboard dot com. It lasts you for a pin out there. You have to put this pin six five six five nine. Okay, I want all of you to go to live dot voxboard dot com. So let me show how does it really work. You just go with your copy. Just link over here. Put it up anywhere you want. Put up on a Chrome browser, Safari browser, whichever log, whichever device you're coming from. Okay. Then when you log into Live or Workflow, it will ask you for a pin. This pin over here is six five six five nine. You just put this pin. Click on OK next. Then click on next. You have to wait for the question to come. You see this page out here. So wait for the question to come. Right. This is what you need to put. So I want very quickly people to actually put this. Okay. Uh, and once you're done, type the word done on the chat box. I put I put in the chat box for all of you people on YouTube. Okay, you need to kind of uh, just type this thing. I'll just wait for a minute, then I'll start the voting. Okay, so I'm assuming most of you are able to do it. Okay, well, let's let's see how does it work practically. So it's quite simple. Now. When I basically at my end, when I start the question, okay, you'll see a question for exactly sixty seconds. You need to vote for the question. You need to basically put the right answer in sixty seconds. The faster you are, the better you are. The more points you get. All right. Are you ready? Let's start this. So I just click on start over here, and sixty seconds started right now. You can see over here in front of you, the question will come like this. If you just tap on the right answer from here, just take a tap on this answer, click on vote. When you do that, you have to wait for the answer to come. Okay. So forty eight seconds more. Forty seven seconds. So you can what you can simply do is you can make questions like this. So at the end of your every class, make some questions and keep it ready on the screen, right? You have to prepare the questions in advance. Moment you do this, moment you prepare the questions in advance and keep, all right? People, students should vote. The students will be super excited. They feel so happy because they are now engaging with you online. So if you see. Online engagement is not that difficult. You just need to know the right tools for online. And best part is this tool is absolutely free. But the only limitation is you only make up to five quizzes. So quiz means I can have multiple questions on one quiz, but I can only make up to five quizzes over here. Four, three, two, one. And let me just stop the quiz. You can see ninety-five percent of you, four forty-one people voted for this quiz. Ninety-five percent of you voted for making students comfortable. Two point five, two point five people person or people actually put teacher training a student onboarding. Now, are you ready for the next question? Type the word "ready" in the chat box. Are you ready for the next question right now? Okay, let's do this. So now we can. Uh, I can just put a second question for all of you. Okay, which is the best tool for live sessions? All right, I just click on start. So I got sixty seconds. 
okay So if you are not able to open the application, don't worry about it. You can probably try it at your home next time, right? So don't worry about it. Okay. Now twenty three seconds more. Twenty nineteen fifteen and finally we said ten nine eight seven six five. Four, three, two, one, and let's see the right answers. So maximum people have answered for Zoom, fifty-four percent, forty-three percent go for you know a uh, PowerPoint, then VLC, then QuickTime. Okay, no problem. Okay, the last question for the day. Now this is an open-ended question, guys. Okay, where you have to basically put if you type something out there. So I want you to type something over here. Okay, are you ready for this? Let's start. So now again, a new question coming on your screen. If you just keep on typing, the you know what do you feel about the session? Do you feel it's wonderful, it's awesome, it's excellent, excellent, whatever it is. Just type you know your answers in one word, and then we can see the entire word cloud of what you said about the session right now. So like this, you know, let's take. You can also basically put up any question in your class. and you can always ask people that hey you know what is the time you know uh, that you should have a mock drill in your ships and then like people type the number 3 months 2 months 1 month 4 month what should have a mock drill in your ship by the way let me see who got the right answer yeah it's 3 months all right so now It's done. Let's stop. And you can see the word cloud out here. Okay, word cloud is too jumbled up. Let's see the frequency of the word. But frequency of the word is excellent, good, informative, awesome, great, useful, amazing, nice, superb. You can see two ninety four people said excellent. Four hundred four people said good. Ninety people said informative. Seventy people said awesome. So you can see the word. You can see the frequency out here. This is the word cloud. The the more larger the word, okay, the uh, That means the more people have actually put that word out. Let me just zoom out the screen so that I can see it properly. Okay, yeah, so here it is, right? So this is basically what we call as a word cloud. And yes, so like this, you can be able to answer and judge people about it. Did you find this tool awesome? By the way, type the word awesome in the chat box. You can find this super cool and super awesome, right? So you can also use this tool. It's called voxvote.com, and this is why. you know uh, we normally call this interactive classrooms if you see like what we are doing is we are basically interacting with people we are making the classrooms quite interactive in nature the next is whiteboard based learning now what is whiteboard based learning whiteboard is now let's take if i am faculty like i'm a math teacher or i'm some other teacher i want to start writing on my screen the way you write normally on the board you can also do that as well correct and uh, how do we do that all right i'm going to show you in my video recording sometime from now So this is Voxboard. Now let's go to the next segment, which is about conducting live trainings, and which are the best tools for that. So there are multiple tools which you can use: Zoom, LiveStorm, Google Meet, WebEx, and GoToMeeting. All right. Um, and we can also figure out, you know, we can also figure out that which is the best tool over. So I've compared all the tools for, tools for you right now. So currently, half the tools are freemium. That means they're half free, half paid. Google Meet is the only which is fully free. All right. Now. Let's understand about the duration of the meetings. So, in the free version, Zoom only provides forty minutes to you. LiveStorm, twenty minutes. Google Meet, unlimited. Cisco WebEx, not known but it's unlimited. Now, Zoom is very cheap. It's about fifteen dollars for up to hundred users. Even in the free version, you can still have hundred users over there. All right. And uh, Google Meet is again absolutely free. The, the best part of Google Meet is no application required for LiveStorm and Google Meet. WebEx is okay. you know i don't really uh, prefer webex because webex has a lot of glitches in the middle but according to me the best tool is google meet and zoom are the two best tools for you right now all right in the but the advantage is, the advantage in livestorm and zoom is that you can mute everybody so let's take for a mute all like currently if you see we've muted all of you right now 
that will be easier for you to concentrate because there's no background noise. Otherwise, some people have got background noises coming in. They keep on talking in the background. But the biggest disadvantage of Google Meets is that everybody keeps on speaking sometime or the other. And it might disturb you. And you, and you cannot mute everybody. You have to mute everybody individually. That is the biggest drawback in Google Meet. All right. Now, one of the other advantages, can you share sound? There's no software. Suppose if I play a video and I want to show that video to you, there's no software okay, which can actually uh, use this, uh, which can share sound with you. Even Microsoft Teams can't do that. Right. So I would again highly recommend you to uh, use, you know, uh, if, you, if, you want, if you want to show videos, Zoom is the only platform for you right now. Right. And you can, can you record the meetings? Yes, you can record the meetings on Zoom, on Livestorm and WebEx, but you can't record the meeting on Google Meet. If you want, this is ready right now. You can just uh, take a screenshot of this one. I'll shut off, switch off my video. You can take a screenshot of this one and keep it handy with you. Now, some people are asking me about Microsoft Teams. See, Microsoft Teams is also very good, but again, it's exactly the same like Google Meet. I think team is a very heavy application. So what team unfortunately does, okay, uh, team takes a lot of space in your computer and it hangs a lot. It makes your computer a bit slow. Okay. That's number one. And uh, the number two is basically, you know, the biggest hurdle for Microsoft teams is that you need to have a Microsoft ID for that. It means if you create a separate Microsoft uh, ID for your school and for your college, and only for educators, but yes, you can do that. So Teams is also a good alternative, but then everybody, even your students have to come on Teams. Okay, that's the drawback. So in Zoom and Google Meet and Livestorm, your students, you know, create an account, but in Meet, but in Microsoft Teams, even they will need to create an account in this case. All right. So that's one of the uh, drawbacks of Teams. But yes, the whiteboard feature is there. In all the applications, in uh, I think it's in Zoom, it's in WebEx, it's not in Livestorm and uh, Livestorm and Google Meet as well. So now, quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a demo of Zoom. Unfortunately, I'm going to show you a demo while I'm in Zoom because you can't see my controls. Which is why what I've done is I've recorded a video on Zoom, and I'm going to show I'm going to play the recording with sound for you. I want you to watch that video. It's a 40-minute video where I've given a detailed lowdown on how to use Zoom step by step by step by step. Go through that. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you about engagement tools. Okay. So what is sharing sound? Which exactly what I'm going to do right now. So basically, if you see, you know, when I'm going to play my video in front of you right now, technically uh, the video itself is a video recording, correct? But uh, you can't do this on any other software apart from Zoom, unfortunately, right? Now, if you're concerned about the security, if your number of students are less than 40, I would highly recommend to use. Hi friends, I hope that you can hear me very, very well. One second. Today, I would highly recommend that if you're concerned about security, use the paid version of Zoom and you can live me a session on YouTube the way we are doing it right now. Second option is use Google Meet. If your number of students are small, Google Meet is a very good option. It's free and it's quite easy. Everybody has a Gmail account today, right? So use Google Meets. Otherwise, use Livestorm. Even that's a very good tool. And you can and Livestorm is also absolutely free. Okay, so I'm going to basically uh, show you uh, the demo right now of uh, the Zoom platform, okay, on the inside. Let me just share my sound. I'll be on mute, but then I will answer your questions towards the end of my session. Okay. I'm going to show you how do we conduct a live demo of Zoom tool so that you can actually engage your students and you can start having live lectures in this lockdown period. And most importantly, you would be able to engage students and the experience is going to be seamless for your students and everybody else. So let us understand that what does it take to take a live session and what are the things you should keep in mind. Let me start by telling you that what we're going to cover in the live session. So the first things first, today we're going to see that how to sign up on Zoom, what is the pricing of Zoom right now, how to schedule your first meeting on Zoom, how to generate the meeting ID and how can you start inviting students and giving them URLs to join the meeting. Then. Afterwards, I'm going to also show you how do we manage meeting controls? How do you start showing your PowerPoint presentations, slides, documents, or whatever it is in the Zoom platform? 
how can you basically use whiteboard so for example you're an accountancy teacher you're an arts teacher you will start showing designs and drawings you can do that but for this you would need a special mouse pen which you can start drawing just like you draw on a paper on a mouse okay so you know, basically there's some equipment for this i'll tell you the equipment later and then basically i'm going to also show you that how do you manage participants suppose a student is naughty you want to remove him from this meeting or you want to basically switch off the videos how do you do that all right then i'm also going to show you how do we control your mic settings how do we also ensure that sometimes students might not be able to hear you and some of the things which might go wrong in zoom how do you handle that and most time i'll also show you how do we use breakout rooms so what are breakout rooms breakout room essentially is let's take for example if there are uh, 20 students in the room and like normally you know we get class assignments where we tell people to speak in speak in one corner or make a group and go and speak with themselves now that is also possible with zoom and i'm going to show you exactly that how do you enable breakout rooms and what do you do about it and most importantly i'm also going to show you how do you go live on youtube simultaneously with zoom how can you enable you know breakout rooms how can you start recording your meetings where will the recordings be located and how to share the recording with your students through your learning management system so now let's get started let's understand that how do we first of all sign up on zoom so we're going to cover this particular section right now let's go there so first you go to your browser You simply go and type over here zoom. us, which is an official website of Zoom. Now you can just sign up. The Zoom is absolutely free software to sign up, but the only limitation about Zoom is that uh, suppose if you're a, suppose if you're using a paid plan, so we're using a free plan. In the free version, you cannot. Have more than hundred people in the one room. Well, if you do one-on-one -on -one meetings, it can be unlimited. It means if you're doing an individual counseling or individual coaching, then Zoom meetings can be unlimited. Also, the free version only has forty minutes cap. That means, let's take for example, if for once forty minutes are done, all the participants will log out automatically. Only in the paid version, the Zoom becomes unlimited. Now, having said that, how do we do a workaround with this? If you're using the free version, after the 40 minutes are done, you can ask the students to click on the same link and join back again. When this happens, you get the next 40 minutes absolutely free. Now, best part about Zoom is that they're currently offering absolutely free Zoom meetings to all the teachers and all the educators around the world. So, if you're a teacher, You're in education fraternity. Just write to Zoom. Tell them that you're from education fraternity, and they will actually make your Zoom absolutely free. Not only that, uh, in the free version, unfortunately, there's no much support given. But in the paid version, everything is given. Let's talk about the paid version. If you really ask me, paid version is not that expensive. Paid version is only for fifteen dollars. That comes to about. Twelve to thirteen hundred bucks, and um, even the paid version includes hundred participants, but the meeting duration can be twenty-four hours. What does it mean? It does not mean that in a month, twenty-four hours. It means you can do the meeting all day long, unlimited. You can also manage users over here. You get some more features, and you also get uh, something called as you can also record your Zoom meetings on the cloud. That means uh, the recordings can be saved within Zoom itself. You don't have to save it in a computer. Up to one GB, right? Um, so I'm going to deep dive. Let's just get into Zoom and understand that how do you go about doing it. The first sign up for the Zoom software. I'm not going to cover this part because I'm assuming it's just a simple sign up that you normally do. And most of you, because you came to this Zoom meeting, and if you're watching from YouTube, you must be already been sign up on Zoom before as well. So let's assume that you have an ID. You can straight away click sign in. And if you wish, you know, you can also sign in from a Gmail account. Like in my case, I've signed in from my Gmail account. So I'll just go to my Gmail and I'll just sign into Zoom right now. Now let's understand 
how do we go about doing things so over here first things first is your profile you need to maintain a very professional profile on zoom so if you're running an academy and if your college is purchasing zoom for you then you should keep your college name like in our case uh, you know uh, we're using a company name nordstrom academy so nordstrom academy's name is given over here then comes what we call is the logo so you can also upload your logo over here of your college so that there's a confusion so you can do that all right and um, then you can put your email address you can if you want you can also have some additional features like we have an additional feature of uh, we can we are basically we've taken an additional plan for 1000 plus people so all your details will actually come over here or not on your profile page is it very clear so remember guys the first step is to sign up for zoom meeting once you sign up you need to put all these details about your college let's go next now let's go to the second tab which is what we call is a meeting tab in the meeting tab is the place where we can actually schedule a new meeting let me give you an example of this let's take for example that i got a class tomorrow with my students or let's take let's take now this what 11 o'clock i've got a class at 12 o'clock with my students and i want to basically invite them for a zoom meeting and I want to also have a separate room for them. So what do I do? I click on schedule new meeting. I can give my topic. My topic is let's take for example, digital marketing. One Oh one. I can give my description if I want. So I'll just say this lecture is on digital marketing i'll give a date and a time so i'll just say first may and let me just take this time to be 12 pm all right my duration of the lecture would be one and a half hour my time zone is india now suppose if you want this meeting to be recurring that means i want this meeting to be running throughout the next you know week or throughout the next month i can just say this is a recurring meeting so i can say every week i'm going to do a meeting every monday at 12 o'clock okay and this is this lecture is going to end in the month of june so then you don't have to keep on generating meeting ids that meeting id will keep on generating every week and every week the student will come and attend your lecture are we clear with this so far i will just repeat the step one more time for you you go up you put the topic, put the description, put the date, duration, and recurring meeting if you want to use the same meeting ID throughout the week. Now, suppose if you want to take your students' attendance, so before they start coming in, you want to ensure that they actually fill in their details. You can say required. So attend the so basically people have to attend people have to before they start coming in they will have to put their name email ID every single time, all right. So this is very very important step. Don't forget this. And then I can also basically you know uh, suppose I can also choose an option over here which says attendance register once and can attend any occurrence. That means if once they put their details they can come and attend any of the occurrences or meetings or they will need to register every single time so in case you want to have an attendance in every single lecture i would recommend this option for you where you say the attendance needs attendance is needed to uh, attendees need to register in each occurrence when they attend that means every single time when they click on the link they will always have to put in their name and email and phone number if you want to make your meetings more secure, you can also have a password and you can just say password is digital. So when people come in, they have to put the password, but it's becomes an additional step. So I normally ignore this step, but just in case you want to make it more secure, you can do that as well. Always turn the video off initially because videos might be irritating a bit. And in the audio type, choose computer audio because ultimately you they want people to speak from the computer. So from the mobile devices, that's what you do. Now there are three more options out here, which is called enable join before the host. What does it mean is let's take for some reason you don't come on time, but you don't want students to be, you know, in a waiting zone. 
So you can also tell people to join before you and you can just take this option. What happens if you untick this option? If you untick this option, students cannot enter the meeting till the time you allow them in. So let's take for example, if you're using one meeting ID for your all your classes, then you can probably use the, then you can disable this option. And then students have to wait till the time you manually admit them. But suppose you're having different, different meetings for different, different classes, then you can. Now, how do you conduct different meetings? Always schedule a new meeting. And then simply come down and click on save. Once you do that, what will happen is Zoom will give you a meeting ID. And this meeting ID can be passed on to a student. And when you pass it to a student, they can go from mobile phone, desktop, by just entering this meeting ID for them. Additionally, if you want to give a registration page link, you can actually use this link over here. I can just copy the invitation and I can just simply copy this and I can go to my Gmail and mail to the students as well. Now let us understand that when student clicks on this link, what kind of page will he get? So when he clicks on the link, this is the kind of page that he'll be getting. So he'll say digital marketing one-on-one, -on -one, lectures on digital marketing, what date was every week I'm conducting sessions? Today's first May, he's coming at 12 o'clock. He's putting his first name, last name, email, confirming email, and confirming he's not a robot and join the meeting. That's how you can get your registration page. I hope this was simple for you and easy to understand. Let me give you a quick recap one more time. What did we do? So first things first, we went to Zoom and we signed up for a profile. Okay. After that, you put your logo, put your college name and you start doing things better. Then go to meetings. And if you want to make a new meeting, you can schedule a meeting for yourself. When you do that, give a topic name, give a description. Like in our case, we put digital marketing one-on-one. -on -one. Give a description. Say when you're going to have the meeting. So I'm going to have a meeting at 1st May at 1 p.m. What's the duration of the meeting? It's going to go for one and a half hour. The timing. Suppose you want the meeting to be recurring, you can put recurring meeting as well. That means every week the same link can work. And then you can say you want to do it weekly, you want to do it monthly. And suppose you want to make it custom made, you can also make it custom made as well. You can say no fixed time. All right. And then if you wish, <coughs> you can also ask them to register. So let us take a little bit daily. And we say registration required. So we want people to come and register for the meeting every single time. And I would recommend option second to you, let people register every time before they enter the meeting so that you know which student has entered the meeting and this data can be pulled out in an Excel sheet later on. And suppose you want a password, you can put a password. Always keep both these, both these video options off. The audio should be by a computer or telephone. You can do both if you like. Okay, and if suppose if you want people to dial in. Now let's take, this is one of the very important options actually. Okay, uh, so Zoom has an option where people can dial in from the phone. Unfortunately, they don't have an India number right now. Okay, but there's a way around to this. They can actually dial in from a US number as well, and you can use Skype for doing that. But in both the cases, they would need a proper phone number. So I would, I don't want to option, I don't want to tell the option to you. Better is ask them to install the app and come from mobile phone. And if you want, you can enable some meeting controls, like enable them to join before the host or uh, enable them in the waiting room. Waiting room is you have to admit them manually before they start coming in. And then click on save. And once you save this, the meeting ID will be generated automatically. It's meeting ID over here. Copy the URL and give it to the students for them to register. I hope this was simple and easy to comprehend. Now, whenever you're using a meeting, unfortunately, you can't take it from the web version. So what do you do? In that case, you need to go to your native Zoom application. So how do you go to the native application? Let me show that to you. You go to your, you first of all, install Zoom. How do you install Zoom right now? You go to the browser, go to single resources, download Zoom client. And first things first, you install the Zoom in your computer which you can use this either a, either a version for your Windows 
or the version for your app store okay so just install these uh, meetings for yourself once you do that a zoom application will come in your screen something like this now first things first you need to sign up over here like you need to sign in with your account i'll just show that step to you as well let me just sign out from my account normally zoom meeting will something like this click on sign in with google suppose you're using gmail id if you're using id password use id password a separate browser will open up click on sign in with your account and launch the meeting so it's very simple you need to simply sign in and launch your zoom meetings once you do that all the meeting id which you generated in the web version will also come over here like if you remember i generated a meeting id for digital marketing 101 it has come over here as well so i hope you are clear up to this part and i hope that you got no confusion about this if you have any confusion don't worry the recording of this video will be shared and you can go ahead and watch the recording again and again again and again till the time you make it perfect now let us start the meeting so let's take it 12 o'clock right now and i want to get people and i want to enter i want to make people enter the meeting room i will just say start to start the meeting there are couple of meeting controls in your hand at this point in time let me make you walk through them and how does it really work let me also sign in myself from a different device because that will be easier for to show you a control just give me a moment please let's take right now i'm coming from my different device so i so let's take you give this link to people and people are now clicking on this link of yours the meeting registration link which you made this link of ours which we made over here let me just sign in please give me a moment So if you notice, I'm just entering into the meeting. Moment, somebody enters into the meeting. See, this will come over here as manage participants and admit. So if it is waiting room is enabled, I need to admit them and I need to get them to my meeting room. So as you can simply see in my manage participants area, I can see one more Hitesh has come in. Now if you notice, I have a mic button. I have a mic icon below me and my voice is coming up and down. But in Hitesh's uh, meeting ID, in Hitesh's when he's joined, there's a mic button. What does it mean? It means that he can't listen to you right now. Now, why is that? Is because he must have not enabled his microphone. So you have to always instruct your participants that whenever they join the Zoom meeting, they'll have to click on this button called Join the Audio button, and they have to basically enable the computer audio. If they don't do that, they would not be able to listen to you. And if they're coming from a cell phone, they'll find a small speaker icon in the in the left hand side and over there they have to click on call via device audio okay sorry about that so if you notice now the mic icon came that means hitesh can listen to us but let's take for example that some students are reading ruckus they are speaking over here and they are just chit chatting and you know you are not able to listen it's a lot of background noise so you want to unmute them so when you hover around any name you can actually mute unmute so you can see over here unmute and mute i can mute and unmute them all right now when i unmute a participant he or she can also speak on the meeting as well but if i mute them okay they would not be able to speak to me but now let's take uh, even when a participant is unmuted he can also unmute himself and he can start speaking so some people might play mischief on you there is a way around for it where you can mute all the participants until the time you don't allow them they will not be able to unmute themselves how do we do that click on manage participants and you will find this option over here called mute all click on mute all and untick the option of allow participants to unmute themselves If you don't do this, 
participants can always unmute and they can start speaking, which is why you just click on yes. One of the best practices on Zoom is that everybody should be muted because if they are muted, it will become easier for you to conduct a session. If they are not muted, it's going to become extremely difficult for you to conduct your sessions and you're going to face a very tough time. Now let's take sometimes you want to speak to somebody on the side or you want to speak to your assistant or your partner and you don't want that conversation to go out in this meeting. You can also mute yourself, quickly speak about yourself and then basically come back. You can do that if you want. All right. If you want to enable your camera, you can also do this from here. So as you can see, currently I'm enabled my camera and you guys can see me very well. I can see you very well and that's quite easy. Let me switch off my camera again. Let's take for example now, uh, suppose I've got a lot of participants. You're having at least 100 plus participants. And if you enable the meeting room, it's going to become very difficult for you, you know, to every single time admit them. So you can go to security and you can just disable the enable waiting room thing. So when you disable this, people can join in anytime and they can leave anytime. And they won't really bother you for admission every single time. Now, you know, how do we do it in offline classes? Suppose when a class starts, you say after 10 minutes, nobody will allow to enter in my class. Can you do the same thing on Zoom? Well, yes, you can. So you can just go to security and you can say lock the meeting. So when you lock the meeting, anybody after this point cannot enter your meeting room. That means they will not be able to join and they will not be able to get the attendance in that case. But if you just switch off, switch off this, then they can. Okay, that's your security option. So I'll repeat the three options. They're very critical for you. First things first, always mute the participants and unmute the participants from here. Best practices to mute everybody. How do we do that? Go to manage participants and click on mute all and untick this option of allow participants to unmute themselves. Okay. Second option is basically for you to unmute and mute yourself. Also to uh, figure out your camera settings, you can switch on the camera, switch off the camera as per your own choice and then enable the security. That means, you know, you can actually uh, ensure that the waiting rooms are enabled, disabled and locking the meeting room means nobody can enter after this time. I hope you are very clear up to this point. So these are major meeting controls which you'll be using every single time. Now let's go to the third section of understanding that how do we interact with participants. So how to make a lecture engaging is you can start using chat options over here. And as you see, like what I do every single time is I keep on telling you to type something, type yes, type no, type this, type that. Now why does this important? This is purely important because if we don't ask them to type, people might be buying them with cell phones. They must be, you know, like chatting with their girlfriends and boyfriends and they will pay the least amount of attention to you, which is why you should be asking them to type every single time. So like after my session, I tell you, hey, if you're excited, type over here, excited. If you want to basically, if you understand this concept, type the word understood on, understood over here. Then if you want, you can just randomly pick up a student and tell them, hey, you know what? Tell me what, what did you learn about the session? Let's summarize. And then people start summarizing. Okay, we can do that as well. Now in this section, what, what basically happens is the student, okay, he or she can also uh, enable their camera. So let's take for example, I just, I'm just going to enable my camera from my phone device. So when I enable a camera from my phone device, okay, you can see people can see me. I can see my small face out there, right? And suppose if I unmute myself, then I, they can also see the student as well. So you can also monitor students over here by asking to enable cameras. But I normally don't recommend this. Why do I don't recommend this option? I don't recommend this option to you purely and purely because it's going to consume a lot of bandwidth. So if you don't have a high speed connection, I would not advise you to do this. If you only, if you've got a high speed connection, if your students have high speed connections, I would advise you to take this step. All right. Mm -hmm. Then comes polling. I'll come to the polling part a bit later. So I can just ask people to chat. And suppose if I want to disable chat, I can also disable chat. I can say chat with no one. When I say host only, that means they can only chat with me and not chat with anybody else. And if I say publicly, they, they can also chat among themselves on the chat box as well. So I would recommend to keep it host only. It's easier for you to manage queries. 
Now let's take for example that uh, you want along with you somebody else to also control the meeting. That means your students don't have all these meeting controls, but still you want somebody else to manage the meeting for you. Let's take I want myself my mobile phone to manage the meeting for me. Click on the option more, and you can say make a co-host. Now when you make somebody a co-host, even they can start sharing their stuff from their device. For example, if I'm on my phone, I can now start sharing my phone screen also. With people, and I can actually do that. So, for example, from my phone also, I can share my screen. Let's take I just do this. So you can see my screen over here on my phone right now. You can see my applications. You can see everything out here, right? I can also see my camera as well if I want to enable my camera. All right. So let us not uh, do that right now. Let me just come back over here. So you can actually disable and enable things. Even a co-host can do that. So you need to just make them a co-host. So co-host is people who are who have got meeting their slides just like you, and even they can start sharing the screen. Like you can see in our meeting right now, Neil, my partner, you know, Roshni, they all are co-hosts. So they can also manage the meeting on my behalf, and they can start responding to people on my behalf as well. All right. Now let's also understand about the sharing functionality. How do you share your PowerPoint? How do you share your stuff? So I can just click on share button out here. And if you want, you can see this PowerPoint coming over here. So before you want to share anything, you need to open that particular application for you to share. Let's take for instance, I want to share my entire screen. I can just share my entire screen. Now in the entire screen, what I can do is I can actually share my browsers. I can share my curriculum. I can share my PowerPoint. I can share my animations. I can do all of those things out here right now, right? That's how normally I'm sharing my things with you. And then I can also manage things on top from here. I can mute and mute myself. Okay, I can basically uh, I can pause the screen. What happens in pausing the screen? Whatever. Suppose I'm suppose I don't want to show my browser right now. Suppose I'm signing to my Gmail account. I don't want to show them to them. I can just pause it from here. I can then minimize this. Open my Gmail on site. Okay, and then after that I can come back and I can start resuming my sharing. I can do that. So you can just pause, unpause your shares uh, for easy for ease of work in that case. Okay, so I don't want to show my Gmail right now. I'll just presume that you know you guys are following this. Then this is remote control. Now what is remote control? Remote control is where basically I can also give my mouse access and control to somebody else. So let's take for example, you know I have got some uh, some points in my slides, or I am actually doing a drawing, and I want other people to come and draw for me. I can do that, right? I can just give my mouse control to them, and they can start managing things for me. So these are your major meeting controls that you'll be using. And suppose if you knew, if you want to stop share, click on stop share. All right. I hope this was easy for you to follow. Okay. So I'll just repeat the major controls one more time. The first basically what we saw was we saw mute and mute, we saw videos, we saw security, we saw managing participants. Now basically we saw how to chat with people, so we can start chatting over here. Okay, we can get other people to chat with us. We saw share sharing of screen. Okay, these are the two major functions you'll always use. Now let's also understand that uh, suppose now you're an accounting teacher, you want to you want to basically start drawing something or you want to start writing something. For this. You would need a XP pen. There's something called as a mouse pen. So XP pen. So this is what you call as graphic and drawing tablets. You need to use this. Okay, XP is a very famous company that gives all these drawing tablets over here right now. So you know, people, so how do you, how do you have a notepad and a pen? The same way people also have a notepad and a pen, as you can see over here. Getting us to the Indian website. Just give me a moment. So with the normal mouse, it will become difficult for you to type, but with this you'll be able to. So this is like a note. This is kind of like a mouse pad which you see over there. Let me kind of show you down. So this is kind of a mouse pad, and you get this pen out here. So you can whatever you write over here, it will basically start coming on your screen, and then people can start seeing your screen effectively. Let me show this to you in practical life. Let's say we go back to our Zoom. Now, instead of sharing a screen, I can start sharing what we call as a whiteboard, and I can just say whiteboard. Right. So when I do that, this 
thing will open up where I can start drawing right now. So I'm, I don't have an XP pen, but I can just type over here something like, I can also use my mouse with this, but mouse becomes a bit difficult unless you're very good at Photoshop, you've got proper mouse, so I'm very bad at this. Let me clear this off. Okay, let me just clear all the drawings. So you can actually do that. Suppose you want to, suppose you want to highlight something, you can highlight something as well. Okay, you can start drawing over here, whatever you want. Right? And you can use these controls as per your thing. So actually you can do this and suppose you want to save this, you can also save this as well. So if you have XP pen, then you can start actually writing over here like a match teacher and you can start doing that, uh, you know, about you. So suppose you're an art teacher, you want to draw something and show them, you can do that as well. I'm more of a PowerPoint guy. Okay. So one of the other ways that what normally what I recommend is, you know, you can start probably uh, writing your things on a piece of notepad, put a picture out there on your screen and you can start showing the picture of the sums which you have. All right. Or one other trick, what you can basically do is, I'll just show you, suppose I type, suppose I type math sums. So let's take, you need to write your sums in a very methodical fashion. Let's take for example, like this is my sum which I want to show to people. Let me take a bigger drawing in this case. Let me take this one. Let's take for example, this is my match sum. Let's take this, assume that I've written something on a piece of paper. Let me take an actual piece of paper. You come to the PowerPoint and what you can simply do is paste that image out here. And again, beam that image in the big screen. So you just take a photograph of your sum, beam it in the big screen and then you can simply put a shape over here. So you can say first things first, people write down 84 to 233. Second step is to add 43 and 60 to this. Third step is to do this. Fourth step is to do this. So you need to make it in a very methodical fashion. I know it's going to be a still tough thing to do for a lot of accounting teachers, but this is one methodology which you can do. Otherwise, when you start writing the sum, just start clicking pictures and you keep on moving slides and you start pasting that picture on a PowerPoint. You can do that as well if you like. All right. So it's some options which I told you, you can actually start using for yourself, which will make it easy for you to do things. But suppose I don't want whiteboard, I can just disable the whiteboard. So I can just come back and do my screen or I can just click on stop share and I can stop my sharing ability. This is how you use a whiteboard. So sharing screen will actually help you do all of these things all by yourself. Now let's take for example, if you're showing a video, now while showing a video, uh, let's take now you go to YouTube and you start showing a video from YouTube. Now when you start showing a video, unfortunately the sound of the video would not go to the opposite participant. Right? So how do you ensure that your sound goes to the opposite participant? For example, if I want people to see some problem or see some equation or see some video from my side, how do I do that? So let's take I want people to listen to this song or I want people to listen to, you know, one of the things. Now, how do I ensure that, you know, my uh, audio goes to the opposite person? So simply put, you just first pause the video, come back over here, click on this thing called new share, you find the option called share computer sound. When you do that, then whatever you play in a computer, even if you play a native video in a computer, they will still be able to, you know, see the sound, uh, hear the sound and they can be watching a video. So one of the good ways to engage your students is to keep on putting some videos in the middle. A lot of, in, lot of you know, these online YouTube has tons and tons of video on mathematics, equation, theorems, or your science, digital marketing, whatever it is. So let's take, I want to show them Pythagoras theorem. So I can also just take any video which is animated in nature and I can basically, or just normal video, which I think is very good. And I can show them this video while I am taking a lecture. So what happens, you get a breather. The student also get a breather looking at your face and they basically also are able to comprehend pretty well because you're combining some videos with your live lecture. You can do that as well. So that's one of the good tips that you can actually use, right? Um, so yeah, so you can actually do that. So click on share again and click on share computer sound for yourself. I hope you got this and I hope that so far you've been following me patiently. Let me just show you things one more time. We saw manage participants control. We saw how to share things and we also show how to share whiteboards. Okay. And how to share a particular PowerPoint in this case. All right. And so I just need to stop share right now. This is some of the options that you have. 
Now, the other option that you have is what we call is breakout rooms. Now, what are breakout rooms? Let's take for example that you want to give an assignment to people, and rather than ch- ch- chatting on WhatsApp and separately, you can start telling them to make groups over here itself. Now, depending how much of participants I have, suppose I got ten participants, twenty participants, I can break them into multiple rooms. I can tell them break participants into four rooms. Suppose if there were Uh, 20 people. They will automatically divide to 20 by 4, and they will actually get at least, you know, five five people in one room. So that this can happen automatically by Zoom itself, and they will all have individual Zoom IDs, and they can start talking to each other. And suppose you have option of stopping it back. When you stop it back, they all come back over here. It's very good function which you can actually use. Now coming to the most important function is recording a lecture. When you start a lecture, remember to record it. So you just click on record button. And click on record on this computer. When you do that, how do you know the recording is on? You'll find this recording button coming up on top. If you do not find the recording button coming up on top, that means this recording is not happening in your meeting right now. If you want, if you want to give the videos after the meeting gets over, you will need to record your meetings for sure. If you don't record them, it won't look pretty good. Okay. Currently, I'm just stopping the recording right now because you don't want to record this video. And if you want to record on the cloud, you can just click on record and you can record to the cloud as well. In this case, the meeting is saved in the cloud; it's not saved on your computer. All right. And suppose you want to go live from here. How do you go live? Click on more. You can say live on YouTube. Now, when you click on this button, what basically happens is it will start opening up your Gmail accounts. You pick up that Gmail account which you currently are using and which you have an active YouTube on. For example, I got active YouTube on my own channel, Hitesh Motwani, and then I can keep up my company names, which is Nordstrom Academy, or my client names. So I'm going to put my company name out here, Nordstrom Academy. So now I'm going live, not from my handle. I'm going live from a Nordstrom Academy handle. This is how people on YouTube currently are watching my video. So before the video, we actually go live. So I can just put my digital marketing one-on-one policy, privacy, unlisted. I always make your videos unlisted. Now what's the difference between public, listed, and private? Unlisted means that whenever you share the link, only then they can watch. If you make it public, you know, then everybody can watch. When they come to your channel, they can also watch the video. But when you make it unlisted, then only people whom you share the link, only they can watch, and others cannot watch it. In private means they will need to sign into a Gmail account. You need to give them access individually to the Gmail accounts. That's a good. Uh, that's a quite a task. I would recommend that if you're doing a private session, always keep it unlisted, and you click on go live. Moment to do that. Okay, what happens is Zoom uh, passes on your video to YouTube. Now remember that whatever I speak on Zoom will probably come after ten seconds on YouTube, but a YouTube audience would not realize that simply because they have also been doing the meeting live. So for them, the experience will be seamless. So don't worry about that at all. And once you go live on YouTube, you can basically see it over here that um, you know we are just trying to pass on our video feed to YouTube feed. And once that happens, YouTube will give you a link. and that is the link you need to share with people when you go live from youtube that's how you basically do things similar to youtube you can also go live on facebook as well all right first let this happen with this taking some amount of time so by the time this loads let me just show this to you okay so you can see it over here we can also go live on facebook as it's not coming over here right now but how do you give a link of a youtube just click over here and you can say copy streaming link and the streaming link is already made and then you can start giving the streaming link to people and then they can start you know going for the meeting out there and they can start watching you wherever they are so it's just time or i don't know why maybe when i'm reading a lot of apps but yes but normally it works so you can actually do that and when you when you give the link to people this is how they can see the meeting you can see 17 minutes already passed by digital marketing 101 you know And people are actually seeing that right now. So going live on YouTube is no rocket science. It's quite easy. Anybody can do that. All right. Let me just stop streaming right now. So I stop my streaming, and that's how you manage your meeting controls. So I'll just repeat one more time what we did. Let's give a very quick summary. So step number one, we basically went on Zoom, right? Sign into Zoom meetings over here, and you made an account. After you made the account, you manage your profile. Let me just go to my account. You manage your profile. Where you need to put your logo, you put your name, 
You put your details, etc., etc., etc. Click on meetings. Did you know meetings over here? You basically had this thing called schedule a new meeting. We showed the meeting settings to people. So suppose you want to have a new class, click on schedule a meeting. Have a new class, put your topic, put a description, put when it's going to happen, time zone, recurring meeting, registration required or not required, and settings over here. Click on save. We'll just save it. Log into your Zoom account from here. Okay. Now let's take, if I'm going to leave the meeting, I'll just click on end the meeting for all. But let's take for example, I want to, I can see all my meetings over here as well. You see the recording thing converted in my meeting. But I'll just show that to you later. How does it really work? So you will see meeting over here, click on start a meeting. When you start the meeting, the meeting starts. Then you can actually start uh, getting people in by, you know, by looking at manage participants. And when somebody comes in, you can come through your participants at 12. You can mute and mute yourself on and off your video. Okay. Chat, sharing screen. So you can share screen to share your entire screen with people. If you need to do that, right. And then you can also basically use, uh, you can also pause the screen feature as well. And most importantly, you can record on your computer. Let me just stop the sharing. You can record on your computer from here and you can actually use breakout rooms as well. Now, one option I haven't showed you so far is polling. Now what is polling? Polling is where you can start conducting polls within your meetings. How you start conducting polls? Click on polls. Add a question. And you can start beaming polls to people as well. When you come, you can just put your question out here. You can say, for example, are you enjoying this meeting? Click on yes, no. Just click on save. The moment you make this poll out here, what is going to happen is when you go to this Zoom meeting, you can then click on the poll button. And you can see, let's suppose I want to conduct a poll, just click on the poll button. That's my poll, I can just launch the poll. The moment I launch the poll, all my participants start seeing the poll. It will come on the screen. And if I end the poll, the poll will end. If I enable it, it will enable. And at the end, I can see the statistics of my poll as well. So similarly, we can do polling as well. So these are some controls which you can use to make your session very engaging, very live. And this is what I had to show you about Zoom meeting. I hope you enjoyed. The reason we did it in the recorded format is because I cannot show you the controls while I'm in the Zoom. But now I will see you on the other side. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was very clear for all of you. And I'll see you and we can take some questions out there. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the training of Zoom. And I hope you got an entire lowdown on how to use Zoom application. Now, some of the questions which are, which are very common that you will ask me right now is, is are all these features available in the free version of Zoom? The answer is no. I think you can use a whiteboard in the free version, but you cannot use the breakout rooms. You cannot use, you know, the uh, live streaming feature on the free version. If you want live streaming, you want breakout rooms. Unfortunately, all those come in the paid feature. For the entire feature list, I would recommend you to go to zoom.us and you can just check, uh, you know, their website for giving you a lowdown on what is available, what's not available in the free and the paid version as well. But paid version, okay, is uh, extremely, extremely easy. And it's not that difficult. And it's also very cheap, right? So you can actually do that as well. So um, now let us basically go ahead and don't worry, you get, the, you get the recording of all these things. All right, so don't worry about it. So, Let's now understand that how can we essentially go out there and conduct assessments and engage people out there, right? And how can we do that? So let's do that. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do assessment for. Now, the question is, what can you use assessment for? You can use assessment for number one, increasing engagement, all right? Where if you do assessment, it actually motivates people to be there, right? Number two, is you know to make students only create a test as an activity for example you can also create tests to do an activity in the class not just to grade marks and also you can what you can do is what i would recommend is now from going forward since the entire system is changing the education system also has to change somewhere right so my recommendation to all of you is that when you start using this 
uh, you know, features, or what I'm going to show you right now sometime from today, all right, you should use this as a part of your marking system also, because that's how the students will get, you know, marked. Also, uh, make the time short uh, in your exam so that you can copy less. See, because the chances of copying in the exam will become very, very high when they give assessments. So make the time extremely short for them. Okay. And then, okay, you also need to basically uh, post or have post class feedback. So, when you do a class, it's better to have a post class feedback. You can use Voxboard for that. And I'm going to show you a couple of more tools which can actually help you do that as well. All right. And last thing is create your study material. Curate your study material from the internet and for yourself. Because if you don't have a study material, what do students learn from? So, earlier they had books, but now obviously the books are not available. They can go out there and buy books also. But thanks to the internet, there are plenty of resources available on the internet, which one can use and one can utilize for this one. All right. Let's now understand that how do we go about uh, making assessments done. Now for this, the first tool I'm going to show you is called Kahoot. Now first, let's do this test. Let us first do the Kahoot. And then after that, I'm going to show you how do we make one. So are you ready? Type the word ready on the chat if you're ready for this. So first of all, you need to you need to go to this website called kahoot.it. Okay. And I will go to kahoot.com. Now to today's session, we have added some maritime related questions. Let's see how many of you guys get this right. Okay. So I want all of you to I want all of you guys to currently go to kahoot.it. K A H W O T dot I T. Okay. And first of all, we play the game. So you can see we created a separate questionnaire for FDB today, right? And where we have actually put across a couple of questions for you guys. And now we're going to play these questions for you. So it's exactly like a Voxboard only, but this is a bit more fun and a bit more advanced version of Voxboard. And obviously it is more user friendly as well. Okay. Just give me one moment. So it's quite simple to use just to give you a perspective on the background. You can see over here when you come on the, when you come to the back end, you will need to basically put up your question. Let's say, you know, I put a question saying, what are different methods of finding compass error? Right. I can also give a time. I can say 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 60 seconds. They have read four options by taking action, by amplitude of cholesterol body, by when vessel at birth, or all of the given above. And I tick mark the right answer. For this example, if I have to put the right question in place, click on add a question. Let's take a put true and false. And I'll just write over here. Okay. Something like um, is Zoom uh, LMS, right? True or false? I can give a time over here. I can give it 60 seconds if I want. Right? I'll be 60 because there are also people on YouTube. There's 30 second lag on YouTube and Zoom, right? So even they can answer it. And I can just make it false. And I press done. So you can keep on adding new questions out here. You can basically put quizzes, true and false, word clouds, puzzles, whatever you want. Click on done. And you can see how does it really work. I'll just show you by playing it to you by giving you a small demo. Let's say I want to test this Kahoot. It's pretty simple. So now what you need to do is you will need to simply go to this website called Kahoot.it. There will be a game pin which will come on your screen. Okay. The so you you this is your view. This is user view. And this is the view of a person who plays the game. So let's take I'm currently playing the game. So I need to do classic over here. Let me just see what is wrong. Just give me one second. I click on play, teach. classic. Now, you will need to go to kahoot.it. When you go to kahoot.it, okay, you, they'll ask you for a gateway. Okay, 
you need to have a game pin. The game pin is 554304. All right, 554304. And I wanted to put across your name. So after that, you have to put a name. Your name will come over here. I'll give you one minute for this one. Okay, so you can see a lot of people joining in the game right now. We got about four plus people joining in. We have one more minute, and then we then we quickly do this test. Okay, you need to be smart enough to answer this question because these questions are not typical ones. They are maritime related questions, and some are generic one as well. So I'll just then the the clock is ten fifty one. I will start the quiz. Let's start the quiz. You can start. Now, there'll be questions coming on the screen. So the questions will come on the screen only. The only the options will come on your phone. So first is a question on my screen. Emergency steering drill is required to be conducted uh, in in at an interval not exceeding what five months, one month, four months, and three months. Select the right answer on your phone. Okay, you need to see the you need to see the four options out here. It's like the right color on your phone. When you do that, then only the answer will be recorded over here. We can see the answer is three months. We absolutely got it right. All right, this is three months. Absolutely right. So you got the drill. It's quite easy. Okay, I'll show you one more time. Next, so we can see now currently Senorita, Chidambaran, Karthik, Ganesh, and Dhiren are the one who are currently on top. All right. Next, what are the different methods of finding compass error? It's all. It's all of the given answers. By amplitude of celestial body when vessels are at birth, or by taking up azimuth of celestial body. Wait for a minute for a YouTube friends to answer this. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, so the answer is all of the given answers, not just by taking up as you would celestial body. Most of you got it right. So now let's see who's on top Prashant, SMD, Amit, Nishad, and SKK. Let's go to the next one. Third question is Zoom and LMS. What do you think? True or false? So the thing is, the faster you are and the right answer you give, the more points you get. That's how this tool actually works. Okay, 20 more seconds left, people. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So yes, the answer is false. It's not an LMS, it's a live platform only. Talent LMS was an LMS. You can see SMB, Prashant, Pradeep, Amit, and Karthik Kanan are the top five currently. 
Fourth one, count is the best way to engage students. What do you feel, true or false? This is an easy one. So you can actually put true and false. You can actually put, you know, uh, polls. We can do everything over here. Okay, it's true, absolutely right. All right, we can see SMD, Prashant, Fun, Amit, SKK over here. Now this is a word cloud. If you just type something, describe your experience in the session in one word, right? So it's also similar to what we did in Voxboard. You have to just type your answer, and the more answers you type, the word cloud will pop up on my screen after some time, right? And that's the best part about Kahoot. You can do multiple things out here, and not just, uh, you know, do a quiz. Okay, this is the word cloud we've got. Let's see what the word clouds are. The same we can also answer it. You can also basically get your question. You can say awesome, true, excellent, informative, good, great, wonderful, nice, yes, amazing, cool, best, all of these things. So same thing when you can do. So let's take when you answer a question, ask them to type, people type it, and the answers come on the screen. It's quite fun. Right now, the last one is a puzzle where you have to just drag and drop and you know, put in a particular order. If you guys remember, what's the process of online college management? What I thought to you yesterday teacher training, making a course, asking students to view a lesson or student training. Just drag and drop the right answers and make them in a sequence. So, what is the first sequence? What is the first thing you should be doing? Okay, is it teacher training? Is it making a course? Is it asking students to do student training? Second thing you should be doing, third thing you should be doing, and fourth thing you should be doing. So, drag and drop in the right order so that you get the answer. Absolutely right. So you can also give them steps in, in this case and ask them to do the same thing for themselves. So two, one, and that's it. The right answer in the sequence was, first step is teacher training. Second step is student training. Then making a course. And last case, asking the student to view a lesson, right? So the best way to answer these questions is always remember the first one, the last one, the rest to the middle two are quite easy. Okay, let's, I think you, I think you most of you got it wrong because uh, you, know, you were not able to drag and drop, but then that's just, when you have to train people on that one. Right, so it's quite easy. And let's see who the who the winners are. The first winner, the third option is this guy called Fun. I don't know who the Fun is, but then uh, hope you can get your name right. Prashant. Second, let's see who the first one is. SMV. So congratulations to all the winners. We have Prashant, SMV, and Fun, and Amit and SKK are the fourth and the fifth runner-up. Right. This is sort of fun when you play this thing with students, and you know they will also enjoy it. It's quite exciting for them as well. So Kahoot is a fantastic app, which I would highly recommend you guys to use and you guys to actually go for. So now how do you make a quiz? Listen, let me just tell you, show you a quick demo of that. Okay, making quiz is very simple. So you should come to Kahoot. Okay, when a Kahoot is absolutely free for teachers, so don't worry about it. When you just select an account, ensure when you make an account over here, select teacher over there, don't select anything else. You can click on create over here on top and you can choose what do you want. You want new Kahoot? Click on new Kahoot. We're going to make a new Kahoot right now. So first put your questions in. Let's take, I just put a question saying that, uh, you know, uh, who should, what are the students in maritime, maritime college, Call. Get it. Students, cadets, participants, and people. So that is cadets. 
you know, put that. If you want, you can also put a picture, by the way. Let's say you want to show a picture. Let's say you want to show how does this vessel look, how does that vessel look. You know, so you can also upload four images and people can choose the, for right, the right image at the right time. Now, similarly, you want to add a question, you can add one more question. You can add open-ended. So for example, I can just say, what is the top thing you learn today? Right? And then you can type some answers and keep it ready. If, they are, if your answer matches their answer, they get the right question. For example, we can say, Zoom. We can just take, for example, say, you know, Kahoot. We can say something like uh, Voxvoot. Right? So only if they answer one of these three questions, they get the point. Otherwise, they don't get the point. So we can also do that as well. Then we can also add true and false. We can also add open it. We can also add puzzle. So we can go to puzzle and we can just say, what are the steps in using Zoom? So if you give a right answer over here from start, you can say, make an ID, make a meeting, invite participants, and conduct session. Right. So Zoom will automatically go will automatic jumble up the answers and give to them. Once you're done with this, click on done. And you give a name to the code. I just say FDP test. And I click on continue. And when I do that, okay, I can actually play this code with people. So you can see when I test this Kahoot, I can also test the Kahoot beforehand before I actually go for make, uh, before I go for actually playing the Kahoot. So it will show both the screens, the phone screen and the desktop over here. You can see over here phone screen and desktop screen. This is the phone which you guys log in. This is the desktop, which only the host logs in. So, if you don't, so as, a, as a user, if you click on classic, you click on classic, what will happen is, uh, a game pin will come here automatically. So you can see over the game pin, student has to put the game pin, 453887, click enter, and then he puts the name. I just put Hitesh, and I press enter. You can see I came over here to moment, you enter this game pin, you will also be inside the game and you can see the name of the participants out here. Now when that happens, you can see now Arun came in and other people came in. Correct? I'm going to start the game because I just want to show you a demo right now. When I click on start, when I click on start, the question will appear on the screen. As you can see, three, two, one. This is the screen that I see and screen that you see as well. What is the student's maritime college called? Right? And then on the phone, there will be options. There won't be any answers given over here. You see the, you see, you see the thing over here, inside the option over here. Correct? You press OK. Correct? But to do that, what typically happens is, uh, the faster you answer, the more points you get. And then once it's done, once 20 seconds are over, we can actually check the answer over here. We can check who the top five are. So you can see cadets is the right answer. The people gave the wrong answer as people and students. You click on next. So HGN was the first one, Saravan, Dawn, Arun, and Suyash. Quite easy, quite simple. So I would recommend that you guys can also make your own cahoots and you can play with their students as well. Did you guys love this app? Give me a quick love it in the chat box and you love this app. Right? So in case you're showing charges to you, you have to basically uh, go ahead and request them to give you a free version and tell them you're a teacher. So if you give us some proof, they'll make it free for you. So um, what we will do is we'll take a quick two minutes break. I believe that some people over here want to freshen up. So it's 11.3 right now. I would say strain up your legs for two minutes. We take a two minute break and we come back. Now it's 11 3 right now. We meet back at 11 05. All right. And we just come back. So we'll take a short break and be back.
All right, so we're back. I hope that you've straightened up your legs and everything, right? So don't worry, if you're not able to get Kahoot, I would recommend you watch the recording again and you practice this because you need to practice this a bit, right? It might be overwhelming for some people, but it's not that difficult also, right? So don't worry about it. Let me show you, let me show you a second application, which is called Socrative, right? Socrative is a very good app. It's like, it's more like gamification, right? It's very similar to Kahoot again, but we can also play games over here. That's the advantage. Let me just show you how does it really work. So if we go to this website called socrative.com. And you can just make a free account over here. Socrative is currently giving you, a, so you can put a teacher login and you can just make an account of teacher, right? And then you can start making a game over here for people. Let me show that to you. Let's take, I want to currently play a game with you, which is a quiz. Let us play a quiz first and then I'll show you, you know, how do we essentially go about doing it. So I'll just, first of all, make a quiz. Let me first, let me first make a quiz over here. Let's just first make one. Let's take out a make a quiz called multiple choice question. So I say, okay, let's make one, multiple choice. And we just put a quick question out here. So your we'll quizzes. You'll make a quiz out here. So first step, go to socrative.com. Second step is make a quiz. So when you go to quizzes, you can simply make a quiz over here. You can say create a free folder. Okay. I think I'm only allowed the free version only allowed three. Let's make an let's just change the existing quizzes. So this is one of the questions. So first we put a question saying that which is one of the best free LMS tools? Talent LMS, online school pro. Talent LMS, Blackboard, Talent Focus LMS. The right answer is Talent LMS. Second question is, which is the best application for live classes? Zoom, Zoom Info, Zoomly, it's Zoom. And online teaching can be made more fun if only if teachers train themselves. What do you think, is true or false? You want to put that as well. I can also add one more question. Let's take up, I add just one more question over here. Saying, which is the best live voting application. Let's take a put Vox vote, Vox white, Vox vote, or Voxy voting. Right, second one, you press OK. Now, once you've you made all the questions, you can just put tick mark and you can ensure that your questions are done. All right, you can save an exit. So once you do that, now let's play a quiz with people. So currently, I can play a simple quiz. I can click on quiz over here. I can choose which quiz I want to play. I click on next. And then if I want, I can basically make it instant feedback where people actually get instant feedback after this thing. So first, people have to log in. They have to, they have to put a name. I can also shuffle the questions. That means everyone will get different questions. Nobody will get the same question in the classroom. That means nobody can copy it from each other. I can also shuffle answers. That means whenever uh, you know people actually start answering questions, they can also shuffle their answers as well. So even their answer won't be same. So when one student says the third is the right option, fourth is the right option, that can't happen, right? I click on and I think you know, say show on final score. I click on start. Now when I start this quiz, okay, what you need to do is you need to go to Socrative.com. So everybody needs to just go to this website called Socrative.com, and this is the game pin. The game pin is J B S E B W W. So you need to go to Socrative dot com and you need to put this game pin as jbs ebw and you'll just say login student login when you go student login you'll ask you the room name the room name is what i just told you right now jbs ebww so i just put over here jbs ebww then click on join it'll ask you for my name so my name is Hitesh, done, done, and then I'll enter the room. And you can see over here, the question keeps on coming automatically. After you give the right answer, and the moment you start giving the right answers, your question, basically we can actually see, you know, what answer you're giving, which is right, which one is wrong. For example, we can see currently there is Aditi, Ajay, Akhil, Anand, Ashish, Basu, Biju, and we can see what answers you're giving. So one in the green is right, one in the red is wrong. For example, we can see Ganesh, Get the first answer wrong, but you got the other other right. You completed 100% of the quiz. So then we can actually check which one of you is doing the quiz right now. 
how you're doing it, and who's doing the fastest so that we can get the report card. And the best part is we can also get the report card for all of you. Pretty quick, I think I see everybody is giving answers. I can see a lot of people out here. Quite amazing. Sandeep, Santil, Saptarshi, Sasikala, Saurabh. Okay, I'll just put it on top so we can see the game pin. So this is JBS, UWW is a room pin for you guys. Okay. And when I click on finish, the quiz will get over for everybody. Currently, we can see 170 participants are giving this quiz right now. We'll wait for two minutes and then we'll stop it. Quite easy, people. Yep, it's actually uh, pretty simple. All right, you need to go to socrative.com, put the pin JBS review, put your name, and it's quite easy, right? Uh, and yeah, so it's, it's very simple. Anybody can use it. And the best part is the name comes in the order of your names, like you know, it's your initials. Very similar to Kahoot. The only difference over here is we can get results. We can shuffle questions, shuffle answers, and all of them get the questions differently. The answers are different. So you can actually do that as well. Right? So I'll just, uh, for the paucity of time, I'll just pause it over here. You can give the test in your own time. I'll finish the test right now. All right? And I can, I can click on report. When I click on report, okay, I can, I, can do, I can do a teacher login. So I can just log into my account over here. No, this is the final assessment that's yet to come. So don't worry about it. I think I've forgotten my password. All right. So let's put a password in. I can actually figure out what are the results. There were the report cards. I can see, you know, the report card for this particular quiz. Who gave it first? Who gave it second? Who was who got the right answers? They show names and can say show the answers. Right? So you can see Ajay, A A A, Afreen, Arti, Aru, Aruhi, Arti, Arti Gupta, Abbas. You can check all of your listing and you can do that. Right? So it's pretty simple. I'll show you. I'll just quickly give you a quick summary of this one more time. First thing is go to quizzes, click on add a quiz, and you make a quiz of yourself. For example, like we made a quiz on what is the best LMS tool. So just make a quiz first of all. Once you complete the quiz, the room number will come, come over here automatically. Go to launch, you launch the quiz. So I can just say quiz. I can say launch one. And I can just simply put the question. And I can say next. But the independent application not needed to zoom at all. Right? And then you can say I want instant feedback, shuffle questions, shuffle answers, show final score to people, and I say start. I'm going to start this activity. And I go to results. It will be blank screen out here. If people actually start putting their names, their names will start coming over here automatically and they start getting the questions also automatically. They'll get instant questions and instant feedback. The one who answers the question the fastest and the right gets the answer right immediately. Correct? So it's as simple as that. No rocket science. Pretty easy. Pretty helpful. All right? This is how you can actually do the game on your own. So I leave the game open for all of you and you can do the games on your own. This is called, this is absolutely free app. There's no charges for this. Whatever apps I'm showing you, I'm only showing you free apps currently. I'm not showing you any of the paid applications right now. Because that's the entire objective is FDP, correct? To give you free softwares and free applications so that you guys can, education shouldn't stop for anybody. All right. Now, the last tool for today is a tool called Class Marker. Now, if you have to give a question answer to people, now see, checking question answers will become very, very difficult for you. If you want to give a proper question as a format to people, it's classmarker.com. You can actually use classmarker. How do we use it? I'll just show you very easy. You go to the website called classmarker. 
dot com. You make an account over here. So I already have my account over here. I'm sure you log into my account. This is a freemium. It's half free and half paid. This is not completely free, unfortunately. All right. Now this is the first step: is to make a test. This is the actual a test tool. So where you can actually actually give test to people. How do you do that? You can test over here, and you can actually put some. If you have a proper examination, written examination, this is for written examination. So I can actually have some test which is subjective based. I can have some compulsory questions. I can have some optional questions, and the question paper will also get jumbled automatically. And the best part, the grades will also come automatically, right? Let me show you how does it how does it really work. Click on new test. We give a test name. So just take I just say F D P T S Rahman. We can start adding questions. And over here, now there are similar as fixed questions and random questions. I can add some fixed questions. Fixed questions are the question will come to every student. Random questions are the software will pick up questions on its own and share it with students. Right? Let's take if you want to make it compulsory questions for everything, you can make it fixed question only. If you want to give options to people, you can use random questions as well. Now let's first make some fixed questions. So you can add add new questions out here. Now I can add questions which are multiple choice, true and false, matching, free text, or grammar based question or essay based question. Let's take uh, first. Let us put a multiple choice based question. I will say which is the best or how many times should cadets go for a mock drill? And over here, we usually put say one month, two months, three months. Let's take the right answer. Just the right answer over here, and you just click on next. So again, I'll basically go for the new question. Some of them give feedback. I also give feedback to this question as well. I can also make this category as generic, or, or you know, like uh, I can also make my own category over here. I can also give points to them: one mark, two mark, three mark. This is two marks over here. Do to randomize the answers? Yes, I want to randomize the answers. Okay. Do I want to have a radio button? Let me say they can only select one answer, or they can also select multiple answers. I can do that as well. And click on save. This is my first question. Let's take. I want to give them master columns. I can also give them master columns as well. So I can just say something like master following part over here, and I'll just let's for example I'll say uh, best live class app. The answer is Zoom engagement app. The answer is Kahoot. Let's say gamify the classroom. The answer is Socrative. And I click over here. I come down and click on. Give them points. Let's say I give them four points for this particular question. I see them. Save, uh, shuffle both losing matches. Okay, grading should be off or grading should be partial without deduction. Click on save, right? And I can save this as well. Now, uh, I can also have free text. What is free text? Where you can actually put a subjective type question. So I can say, tell us how will you navigate. When you're lost at sea, lost in the middle of the sea, without a compass, correct? So let's take. I can put some keywords out here. I can say not star. They should be the not star over here. They should basically. This is the mandatory thing which should be there in their thing. Okay, they can use uh, wind flow. They can basically use a needle and water to make their own compass. Correct. So yeah, so you can basically put some this in. These parts should be a part of their answer paper. If they are part of the answer paper, they will automatically be graded four points. If they are not a part of the answer paper, 
they won't be graded in the fourth. So this is like a artificial, this is like a machine learning thing that you put the options over here and students have to write the options in the same fashion while they put a subjective answer in place and they're going to save. So when they start giving the test, the answers will come over here automatically. This is how you make a question first of all. Quite easy, quite simple. Are we clear with this? On how to put a question in place? Give me a quick yes on chat box. I'm very clear with this. Give me the question number one, two, three. Right? Okay. All right. So now this, once this is done, I can also add some random questions over here if I want. And then I can click on assign the test. Now suppose I'm giving a test to my students. The second step is I need to, uh, you know, add the students over here. Now in the free version, okay, what do you, what do you need to do? You need to first add the students first. In the paid version, you can actually give a link to people. When they click on the link, they can give the test automatically. Correct? So I can assign to the group and I can actually, 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 I can actually make my student list over here. So I can say FDP test student list and I click on next. And then once I do that, they will automatically get an email. So I can say availability when the test is available. Okay. It's currently available for us. Uh, how many attempts allowed? If they say one attempt, two attempts, you can do that. Any instructions you want to give, you can actually put the instructions out here. You can say we'll allow it to save as list at later date. We don't, allow to, we don't allow to go back to the same answers. They said time of 20 minutes. The pass is 70%. Right? How much time? How much time you want to give a test for? You want to give a test for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 20 minutes, your choice. Can they resume it later? No. Test questions, they can only see one question say same page, or they can see all three questions the same page. You can select that also. Okay. Uh, answers are mandatory. And once they complete the test, an automatic email will come to you. So you complete the test and you can actually go ahead and check the test. Now, can they copy paste it? So they don't allow copy pasting, they don't allow printing out, they don't allow highlighting or copy pasting. So in case you want to allow that, you can allow that. But if you want, you cannot allow that. Suppose you want to get an email, you can say, I want to get an email. Suppose you don't want to get an email, you're not get an email. Right? You want to give them a certificate? Yes, you can give a certificate in the paid version only. All right? And you want to give them a pass marks? You can say pass is 50%. So then they will know whether they have passed, they have failed. And this is all automated. There's nothing. Uh, which is there, which is not automated over here. So class marker is one of the best tools for giving your test out over there. And once you're done with this, you come down, click on assign. Once you assign this, you can assign, assign. the students will give a notification over there automatically and they can start giving the test for you. Right? Now let's just in case you know, how do you add students at the back end in the free version? Click on groups. Now the free version, you can only have 50 students for free. Above 50 will become paid. Okay? So you can actually click on the new group out here. Let's see this my group called FDP test. Okay. And I can actually click over settings. And over here is where I can actually, uh, you know, uh, get my students. Right? I can also go to my accounts. Sorry, I can also go to dashboard over here. And I can also basically add a student out here. So you can see over here, uh, backup email is required. Sorry. Okay. Um, one second. So create a test. You can give a test by a link and you can simply uh, also add a student over here. Now, can extra marks be manually in the class marker? Yes. If you want to do that, once the test is over, an email comes to you and over there, then you can give an extra marks over there to them as well. Suppose if you don't want to uh, give a mark as per the keywords, then, then the class marker also has, an, also has an option where you can just simply tell them that, hey, you know, the marks for this question will be given later and then the marks will be actually be given at a later date for that. And then, but you have to manually go and check every paper manually to give the marks to them in that case. So you can do that. So that, so that you have to basically, you know, registration code have to be in the paid version. So half the options are available in the paid version. In the free version, it's limited to whatever I just showed you right now, unfortunately. Yeah, I can, go, I can click on new group out here. And I can make a new group of students if I want to do that. I can click on, say, for example, it can be TS Rahman, create a group. And then over here, you can add a member. And I can add, I have to add every student manually in this case. So it's a very tiresome process to add people manually every single time. Okay, then I say register now or self registration. I say register now. Okay, so you can see I have got the capacity is only 1000 people per group. I have to give a name of the students out here. 
So I can just simply put new members is Hitesh, the first name, last name, and email ID. So when you put this, an automatic email will go to the students saying that they have been added to the test. You can say Roshni, Tarani, and email ID. So I put Roshni, comma, Tarani, comma, Tarani, Roshni at gmail.com. So if you keep on adding people like this over here, you see the, the limit is first name, last name, and email. If you want to give, to give a password to them, you have to put the password to come to the test. Okay. And the administrator is me and new members. Suppose you want to say yes, send login to new members. An automatic email will go to them. You send an email, go to them. Hi, John, your name is XYZ, your password is XYZ. Go to classmarker.com and give your test. And I can say send it. I can send it right now. I can send it later date. It's my choice completely. And once I'm done, uh, I can just stick on. I can just put my password over here. And when I just simply say register as new users, the new user will get an email automatically where they will actually uh, get to see their ID passwords. You can see this is a name, username, password, password, password is generated automatically for them. I can also save this data to me. Uh, so in the future, if anybody asks me, I can give the password to them. So everything is done automatically. All right, it's quite easy. It's quite simple. Okay, so yes, it is a it is a bit tiresome. I understand that, but you know everything is not that easy ultimately. But yes, it's not that difficult. Also, it requires a bit of learning curve. If you learn things, it will happen on its own. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you like this class marker test. Okay, for you giving your test for absolutely free. Okay, if no, if you didn't understand this, my recommendation is watch the recording. Okay, and you can basically get the recording. The recording is available on Maha Marinas Association YouTube channel. And you can just see the recording out there. Okay, now I'll call upon uh, you know, Captain Ashutosh for the final remark and then we'll go for the test. So Captain Ashutosh, over to you. Thank you, Yutesh. And uh, since we have finished the program, but the learning is not finished, uh, we will have more and more sessions uh, for the maritime fraternity, obviously. And uh, I want to thank all the maritime training institutes for actively participating in this program. I want to thank all the faculties, principals, uh, DG Shipping, uh, uh, Deputy Director General of Training, Sri Ashish Vankade, everyone who have participated. And uh, actually, I wanted to hear some remarks from the principals. But if we start that session, uh, we'll require another two hours. Uh, but uh, you can post your comments. You can uh, give your appreciation. You have some comments to improve. Please give it on mahamariners.com uh, website or on Training Ship Rahman. Or you can WhatsApp the messages. And uh, creative uh, criticism is also welcome so that uh, we can improve the program. But we do need your feedback. And of course, in the exam, you will have a feedback section also. From there also, we will catch important feedbacks, analyze it, and try to improve the program. I just request uh, Sri Ashish Vankade to speak uh, about this program. He is being patiently sitting and, uh, you know, uh, throughout for last four hours, yesterday, two hours, and today for this program. So I really want an insight from him. So Hitesh, can you just uh, unmute, sir? Sure. I'll just do that. Just give me one second. Yes, sir. You're muted. And you can also just start the video. Yep. Thank you so much, Hitesh. Uh, thanks a lot, Ashutosh. For me personally, it had been very, very helpful. And I learned a lot of uh, new things today. And I feel very energetic and would like to be a trainer myself. So I hope all the all those involved in any kind of training, uh, they must have picked up a lot of things on how to engage the boys and girls and how to conduct the exams. I think uh, it was overall very, very helpful. But uh, my sincere request will be like, uh, you know, we should have more of, a, uh, at least some part should have been for the administration side, like how to manage attendance and uh, all those factors. As right. far as the class content is there, that is very good, excellent, no doubt on that. 
from administrative purpose, I think it would be more uh, useful for the Maritime Training Institute. Right. But over and above, uh, thank you so much. Really enjoyed a lot. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir, I would just like to uh, comment on this. The last part which you said uh, for maritime administration and the next session, again, we are one developing for cadets and there is another set of program coming up where all the training institutes can have a common platform. We'll be telling them two to three different platforms where they can manage all. And of course, your DGS Circular 19 of 2020 uh, requires a lot of work which we are doing. So whatever groundwork we do, we will share it uh, free of cost with everyone uh, and we'll get the best platform for them uh, online again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Hitesh. Sure. So now, guys, time has come for the test for today. All right. After the test, my request is to stay back because I'm going to show you an instruction on how to download your certificates. So people who have given the test yesterday and today, and if you are there in both the tests, I'm going to show you a method on how can you download your certificates today itself. All right. But first, I'll give you five minutes to do the test. So just bear with us for next 10 minutes. I know we overboard the time, but just bear with us for 10 more minutes and we will, uh, you know, tell you about certificates today itself. So first things first, okay, is let's basically get your tests done. So you will need to go to this link out here, which you see in front of your screen right now. Okay, which is called FDB test day two. All right, so people on YouTube, you just need to use this link only for yourselves. And you can just give a test. The test is already in the description box, by the way. It's in the description box of YouTube also. So everybody just go to this link. I'll just switch off the chat for some time so that it's easy for me to paste the links out here. Just click on this link right now. And when you click on the link, you basically, your test will open up. So when you just, so I'll just show you a demo of this as well. When I click on this link, Okay, the test over here will actually open up like this. And then you can just give your class test over here. Once you give your class test over here itself, okay, uh, we will have your records at the back end. And then after that, we'll show you how can you get your certificates straight away after this test. But first thing first, give the test. You can put your email, name, phone number, give your test out here. What is the, you know, what is your uh, preferred mode of, Training, what is it? And there's also a feedback column at the end. Okay, give your feedback also to us because we really value all the feedbacks we're giving to us and we take our feedbacks very critically and we seriously at Nordstrom. Okay, uh, so please give feedback. I'll just put the test link over here for all of you so that people on YouTube can actually use this link to uh, get their test as well. So we will wait for approximately five minutes. But then complete your tests, and after that, I'm going to show you, you know, how can we, uh, how can you get the certificates? So people on YouTube currently, okay, you can just see over here, and your test link is given over here. Okay, it's in the description box. So when you just see, when you're seeing the video on YouTube, just scroll down. And you'll find the test link over here in the description box itself.
Hitesh, while everyone is giving test, uh, I would like to discuss with you that this is the power of technology, that the test is given, the results are within few minutes, and uh, the papers are corrected, and certificates are printed. What better, uh, what better platform we can have now? Otherwise, we will take long time uh, in you know uh, setting up the questions. Of course, that takes some time, but correction and making. Uh, the mark sheet and then thereafter the certificates. So the technology at its best right now. So we are proving it live to people. Yes. <laughs> Completely agree. Okay, we have for just two more minutes. By 11.40, you know, the test will be still open for all of you if you want. But we have for, for two more minutes and then we will uh, go ahead and actually hold on to the certificates. So we already see about 622 people have given the test so far. I would like to inform all participants that we do want to take questions from you. But uh, as you see, there's a large number of participants. So what will happen is this session of question and answer will uh, keep on going. So we request you to write to us uh, on WhatsApp, on our uh, email IDs, on tsrahman, on mahamarinas.com if you have questions and uh, we will reply back to you. Thank you for your cooperation and understanding. All right, so we'll just stop the test over here. Now I'll just tell you how to download certificates. So for certificates, what you need to do simply do is refer to the instructions very carefully, right? Because this instructions won't be repeated again and again. 
So please listen to the instructions extremely, extremely carefully. First things first, if you go to YouTube, the same link has also been put in, put in a description box out there. You can also go to the description box and check the link of certificates out there. Now, I'm going to just put this link for all of you on the chat so that you guys can actually use this link to download certificates. Now, it's very simple to download certificates. It's no rocket science. Just see what I'm doing. And just in case if your name is not here, it simply means that you did not give it the, you did not give the test on day number one. Because whatever uh, names that we had got till the night, 10 o'clock, those names, certificates have been printed and issued. Uh, we, as, I, as I told you yesterday, the certificates will be only given to those people who give both the test, day number one and day number two. So, if your name is there yesterday, if your name is there today, the certificates will be there in the Excel sheet. All right. So, first things first, you need to just copy this link out here, bit.lvash is certify FDB. You need to just go to your browser, put this link out there. Put this link out there and there'll be two files given to you. One file is Excel sheet, second file is certificates. Open the Excel sheet. When you open the Excel sheet, okay, you'll find your name out there somewhere. For example, let's take a Majid Kumar. My, my page number is 10. Now what you simply need to do is come to this thing over here, click on download button and certificates. So what will happen is your certificates will get downloaded, all right, on your browser. Now, once they're downloaded in your browser, open the certificates, it will open up in your Chrome browser or in your native application. Simply open it. You have to go to the page number 10. Let's take, I will go to the page number 10. Okay, which is over here. Ajit Kumar. Now once I go to page number 10, right click on this and click on print. Or just press control P. And then you simply have to select the page number. So let's see, rather than putting this, put on custom and press on 10 and press OK. Once you click on save, it'll, the certificate of yours will only be saved alone in your desktop. So you can just click on save, you can just put your name, Ajit Kumar, and you click on save. Once you've saved it, once you come to your desktop, click on your certificate and that's it. If you've got a PDF certificate ready in a minute, right? That's all you need to do. You need to simply do this one step. So simply, Go to the Excel sheet first, note down your page number. Once you got a page number, open the PDF, press the print option and the certificate. Voila. Right? So I'll just give you one more time for all of you. Open the Excel sheet first. Okay. Let's take for example that currently my uh, my number is 16. Right? I will actually have to just download the Excel sheet. So just go to my this thing, download this file or open this file over here. Okay, go to page number 16. That's the best thing download it because then it will be easier for you to search certificates in a very easy fashion. Once you download it, click on certificates. So just click on print. Blindly just click on print. When you print this, simply put your page number. You can say custom. Your page number was 16. And press OK. You do that. You get a page number. You say your name. Click on save. And certificate is there. Okay. As you can see currently, we got certificate of Captain Webhav Rupade, right? So the names have been given as per whatever you put yesterday. If you remember yesterday, we put over there, put your name as per what you want as a certificate. Now, just in case you change your name, I'm sorry. It won't be possible for us because we've got over 1,500 participants. I extremely, I apologize for this one, but we would not be able to change your names, right? The certificates are given in PDF format. Just go to this link, download the files, and certificate will be ready. Right, pretty simple. Yeah, so the certificate link is open for all of you. You can do this. We'll also send this link via email to all of you. We'll send this link via Telegram group as well. So you just link over there also. And certificates will be there. Don't worry about it. It will be there for the next 48 hours. So please download the certificates and keep it with you. Okay. Now, um, basically, if you want to stay in touch with us, you can also follow us on our YouTube channel, Nostrum Academy. You can also uh, join our Facebook group called Digital Ready Professors. We've got a Facebook group of professors as well. Join that group so you can come to know about our future workshops also, which we will keep on conducting. All right. And this is a test link and this is a question answer link. Just in case any questions, you can also ask me the questions on the chat, sorry, on the uh, question answer link given over here. Uh, go to Bitter Advice, NS Academy question, you can do that as well. 
So we'll just wait for five minutes to do question answers, and then we will start the session off for today. But did you guys have a lot of fun? Was it you know was it uh, worth your time? Will you spend with us for almost two hours? And uh, you know we try to give maximum value as much as we could uh, in these two days of session for all of you, right? Because the idea over here was uh, that we need to you know get things up and running for all of you and empower all of you. I would like to once again thank uh, you know Dr. Ashutosh. Um, the DDG shipping team, the TS Rehman team, and all the participants who came over here, who were there with us for two hours, attended the session. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you uh, for coming over here, spending some time with us. And it's really my honor to, you know, serve all of you at the same time. So that is one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, wins for us by having seen all of you over here at the same time. Okay, so if you want, you can ask the questions over here. I also put the uh, the Facebook group link, the YouTube link. You can actually do that as well. Let me just take some questions now. I'm going to open up for question answers right now, and then I'll take your questions one by one. Now, club the common questions together, right, so that we don't waste time. We keep on addressing new queries and new questions over here in this space. All right. So let me just put it over here. Saptarshi, my request is to just message us at info at nsacademy.co and we'll see what we can do about it. All right. So we've got a question thing. How do you use Google Smart Board? I'm unfortunately, you know, we're not teaching Google out here, but the plenty of videos you can see in Google Classroom, which you can use, is also very, very similar to what I just showed you in Zoom. There's no rocket science over there. And it's quite similar to other softwares. So you get a hang of it, don't worry about it. So it's very possible to conduct workshops online right now. All right. Um, <coughs> you put your questions on, the, on that question box out there in this academy questions. And you know we can we'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions if you want. So we are on YouTube. Remember your certificate link is there in the description box. Download them whenever you get time, and you get certificates straight away. So don't worry about that. So I don't see any more questions coming in then. Okay, so so then I guess that's. About it, I guess today you're very crystal clear about things. All right. So let me just open a chat box for all of you. So I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you had a lot of fun. And I hope that it was, uh, you know, it was worth your time to be over here. So once again, Thank you so much for coming over here, for being over here, and for spending time with us. All right, and um, I wish you all the very best. And I and I hope that all of you go online, teach online, empower the world, and uh, you know do the best what we can at this time. Stay safe, stay at home. Thank you. It is uh, uh, just, you. yeah. It is just one request. If you can tell again how to download certificate, because I'm getting a lot of queries. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I'll take one more time. It's very simple, people. I'll just show you a demo one more time for this one. Okay. So see, you just need to first of all go to the certificate link. The link of certificate is bit.ly slash certify FDP. Once you go over here, 
Okay, just copy this link. The link is already there in the chat box also. Okay, go to that link. And once you open that link, let's take you open that link over here. You'll find two files over there. There's the one file of the Excel sheet. As you can see over here, Excel sheet is there. And there is a certificate file. Now this, this file will open up without logging. So you can see currently I'm not logging to my Gmail. They're still opening up out here. Open up this link first of all. Check where is your name. If you're not able to open the link, press just download the download the Excel file also and check where's your name. For example, your name is let's take is over here. Syed Akhil Ahmed 151. That's my name. You, go, you can just click on, click on control F and you can put my name is Akhil and press enter. So you can see 151. So you can just do control F and search your name. So first thing is search your name over there. Just do control F, put your name Akhil Ahmed 151. Then you again go to the same link. Go to the certificates, click on download button. The download certificates, it will come in your desktop. You can also directly search your name and certificates also, by the way. You can just put your name over here also. It will still come. Okay. You can see the page number corresponding to it. If the page number is currently 151. So you can just put this name. And once you're done with this, click on Control P. Print it. So you can just click on, just right click again. You can just click on print as well. So print the certificate. Print it. If you give a page number to this, the page number for this one is what? 151. Click on save. And once you click on save, it will come in a desktop. Okay. Just give your name, Akhil, and press enter. Once you do that, when you come down over here, you can find your name over here saying Akhil over here. Right? Simply put this. Right? Now, just in case, suppose someone saying you don't know, can download it, use Chrome browser. You still find an issue. So when you click over here, you can see download button out here. Click on download button out here. You know, I'm not logged in, same like you, but I can still download certificate. Otherwise, best thing is take a screenshot. You can see over here, I'm taking a screenshot of my certificates, Control C and Control V. You can do that as well. There are multiple options you can use this. Take a screenshot, print it. Printing is better because then you get a high res copy of certificate. All right. Just do this and your life will be very, very easy. So if you're not able to follow this, again, look at my recording. The recording will be available to you on Mahamari Association. YouTube channel, watch the recording the way I do it. The best thing to do is download both the files. When you, when you press enter, you just put the link together, download both the files and keep. That's no problem at all. Copy this, download both the files and keep with you. Press enter. Right? And then, uh, once you download the file, search for your name, search for certificates, you'll definitely find it. You can also search with just putting control F, as I told you. So no need to go to an Excel sheet if you want to do that. If you're, if you're, if you're a bit tech savvy, put, put, just find it. Suppose I'm going to give my name as, you know, let's take uh, Parul. I'm not sure the name is there or not, but let's take Vinod, very common name. You can see there are eight names. Vinod Kumar Athod, Mangwani, Tivaskar, Vinod Kumar NJ. Now, this is my name. This is, this is my certificate. I found my certificate over here, right? So now I can just simply see my page number is what? 73. I click on print. I can just say custom 783 page number. So 783, not 76, my bad. I put the wrong number. 783, right? And you can see your name over here. This is Sangeet Kagurao. I think I put the wrong number, my bad. But this is 73. Okay, that's my number. So I just come over here, go to custom, and I put 783. Minut Kumar NJ, click on save, and save it in desktop. As simple as that. Take a print and you can just save it in your desktop. You can save as PDF. You can see when you see print, the option will come over here. Save as PDF. If it doesn't come, click on save as PDF. The option will be there 100%. You can save it. All right. I hope it's very simple to you. It's very easy. So no need to fret on this one. Okay. Over to you, Dr. Ashutosh. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for that uh, stepwise, uh, uh, you know, uh, procedure for the certificate. And uh, again, uh, Hitesh, uh, thank you once again. And uh, the team also, please convey our thanks to Roshni also and all the team working behind the scene. Of course, uh, we did this in a very short span of time. And I know 
uh, I was pressurizing them right uh, at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock morning. We were getting up and doing things. So great teamwork and we'll continue to do this good work. Thank you very much and uh, bye-bye from our side. Uh, I also thank all the participants who have joined and uh, please do give your comments. Thanks. Good day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.